In ways both small and overwhelming, we all know what brokenness feels like. And sometimes our own brokenness, or the brokenness of those we love, seems like too much to bear. Whether it's buying more than we can afford, or striking out in anger at the people we love, or eating more than we want to, or pushing people away when we need them most, we all have places where brokenness is painfully apparent in our own hearts. We all have parts of our lives where we are waiting for things to change. Whether we're waiting for physical healing or emotional wholeness or spiritual breakthrough, we are all waiting for our brokenness to be mended. We wait because we are broken, and we are broken because we are waiting. What we know in our bones is also declared in the Bible. All creation is tattered, destroyed, and torn, and it has been since that first act of rebellion in the Garden of Eden. The decision Adam and Eve made to disobey God toppled the perfection in that place, and ever since, everything around us and everything within us has been damaged by sin and death. All creation groans for renewal. The world itself is in a season of waiting, of groaning, of yearning for completion. Brokenness is all around us. Yes, one day God will come and make everything new, but until then, we wait in the brokenness. What we cannot secure on our own, ultimate peace, physical health, environmental abundance, we wait for from the hand of God. At any point, God could end the waiting. He could renew all things in a moment. But he hasn't done so yet, and we don't know when he will. Until then, we are the waiting ones, the ones who are betting it all on a God who saves, on a God who promises to come through. For as long as he prolongs his coming, we remain broken. And yet, and yet, even his prolonging is a kindness. He prolongs his coming because he is patient. The day is coming, coming like a thief, when the waiting will finally be over. Until then, though, we remain broken. And so we must learn to love this patient God in the waiting and in our own brokenness. Having trichotillomania as a child made me feel sad and sorry and broken in a way I hadn't known yet. This was a brokenness so persistent that I couldn't escape it, not even for a day. I knew Jesus then, even loved him, but I didn't know what difference he was making in this part of my life. Although I prayed for him to take away my condition, he didn't seem to be hearing that particular prayer. While my little life looked squeaky clean from the outside, there was one segment of my life I couldn't gain mastery over. I couldn't be good enough to will trichotillomania away. I remember sitting on the blue leather couch in the family room of our old house, my legs stretched out over the three cushions, pretending to be reading when I was really just counting the eyelashes on the page. Seven, eight, nine... I didn't have words then, at the age of 11, to name what I was feeling. But what I was feeling was defeated, completely defeated, like an utter failure. Maybe you know the feeling. Maybe your body has betrayed you, or maybe your family is falling apart. Maybe you're reeling from a broken heart, or the sting of professional rejection. Maybe you struggle with the pain of unmet dreams and shelved goals that might never happen. Whatever it is and wherever it comes from, we all know the hollow truth of brokenness, of feeling defeated, of seeing ourselves as failures. The account of the bleeding woman is a small story in the Bible, repeated in three of the four Gospels. But it is remarkable in its power and its ability to startle me back to God. It is the backstory that I daydream about, the life of this woman before her encounter with Christ— To me, that seems to be at least half of the story. The writers of the Gospels note, calmly and evenly, that she had been bleeding for 12 years. But I can't read those lines without wondering about the substance of those days. There was nothing calm or even about those years, I imagine, because not only had she been bleeding for 12 years, she had been waiting for 12 years. And waiting is not a calm and even business. 